sure everything was uh, all ship shape for the race and uh, the racers here are just gonna have to run it using only their wits and skill to guide them so sight reading improvisation consistency at the obstacles and one shots I'm sure you know this already but uh, I just I like saying it every time it's fun it makes it feel very official this is uh, this is the official race and if you want to know the official leaderboard you can check uh, exclamation leaderboard in the chat that's the command Big shout outs, of course, to D to the 4th for helping us out with the website, romhackraces.com, where you can learn a little bit more. And uh, Dr. No, of course, behind the scenes, running the restream. I uh, didn't get a chance to make notes tonight, but I also did want to shout out our testers, our chat mods, and uh, everybody else that goes into making Rom Hack Races. Normally, I have a little list here, and I have everybody... Uh, I have everybody who rated this week. Let's see here. Hang on. I want to give a big shout out to Dark and I. As usual, rating, rating all the levels. Uh, SQL Infection tested this week in Osu Mario Kartman. Big shout-outs to them as well. Tonight's level is a tribute. Interesting. Okay. It's an interesting memo here from Dr. No. Cryptic a little bit, but I'm just glad that I can read it. It's in English and not the, uh, not the cryptic runic fox language. Strategic choice of music in the pre-show here. Okay, okay. Well, I hope you're all feeling well. Uh, I, I mentioned that already. Rom Hack Races, I mentioned that too. I'm Glitch Cat, by the way. Maybe we've met at some point uh, in the future. I used to play Kaizo, and then I got lost in a cryptic, beautiful fox world for a while. But, uh, you know, it's, just, it's on a little holiday. Nice to be back here for some SMW action. We are about ready to start. We got You Fail Me in the upper left, Germ Dove in the upper right, B2DE in the lower left, and Halcyon in the lower right. And uh, we'll be getting started uh, pretty soon here. There are more racers than what you're seeing on the screen. we got scouts who are letting us know what's what. Instead of playing this, you could be reading War and Peace, a book in another language by Toadstool, telling you time and patience. Broil Gardens tonight from Kagem. All right. Also, I didn't get a chance to play this one. Uh, I kind of wanted to see this fresh for the race. I love the overworld on the Superstar. Let's get ready for some video games! Oh my. Oh, I know the tribute. Oh, oh, I know the tribute. Can you guess the tribute? Have Do you know the tribute? Look at this beauty. We have got some uh, fire piranha plants. We got Halcyon in the lower right making a read right now. And uh, we got some fire piranha plants. We got some really cool tunes. Uh, this one was not a port. Kagem usually ports their own rock and roll music in here. But uh, Halcyon, keep your eye on the lower right right now. Halcyon's already making big progress. Spin jumps and avoiding the uh, fireballs. There's, uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. Normally, uh, I have to kind of dive into the tech here a little bit. But there is just uh, some good, solid platforming and these really nice spin jumps with P-Speed. I think I looks, yeah, I look, think you're getting P-Speed there. So first step here uh, for the racers, get, the, uh, get up onto the ledge. Avoid the three fire piranhas, and then just uh, get some P-Speed and run. Try to get that next landing. Germ Dove in the upper right. What could this hack possibly be? Be tribute, tri tributide, tributating. Seems to me like there might be th at least one animal involved. Maybe a, a, a goose? No, not a goose. Um, penguins? Penguins and rhinos? Uh, something like that, anyhow. You fail me in the upper left making progress. Germ Dove, upper right, same thing. But Halcyon, lower right. Oof, get into the fire. And, uh, yeah, next step looks to be picking up this fire flower. And, uh, yeah, more fire. You know, you got fire piranhas. You got fire fire Mario. You got, you got good fire. I'm trying to give you a minute to listen to the music here. Kagem uh, most, most notably puts really, really good really good songs into their hacks and uh, this one is no exception oh yo you fail me nicely done Halcyon too oh haha <laughs> Halcyon made the same mistake but they actually tried to uh, try to bail out so yeah that's actually kind of a smart move if you don't know what you're about to have to do. Skipping the fire flower might actually be the play there because they bop the block from below. It bops the fire flower up. And then, well, yeah, just run underneath it because you because 
it's a safe assumption to think, okay, you actually need to be small. Halcyon, though, back again. Are they still? They're staying small. Does it kill you? Wait, do the racers know something I don't hear? Because that's a really smart assumption and a great read. Wow. Okay. Nicely done. Quiet Mason in the upper right with the same decision here. And Halcyon... Wait. Made it to the... Check point? But the... Uh, what? <laughs> I looked away. I just assumed... I just looked away for a second. Halcyon, you can't take it. You, you can't take your eye off this guy for just a second. Yeah, Halcyon, more like it. Let's see if they can get right back with that consistency, though, back on that same read. Well, they're not reading it anymore. They've seen this once before. Okay, all right. Touched it this time. Touched it. Actually, factually touched. Can we get a confirm? We got the H. Okay. I really thought they hit that. <laughs> I thought he could have sworn. Halcyon taking the lead now into the second section. Carrot platforms and some more really cool spin jump platforming. You fail me, though, in the upper left. Okay, so I didn't notice that the Fire Flower would kill. I didn't see a racer touch it and die. Um, so that's that's subtle. i got to pay attention here. Come on, come on. i got to get my head in the game. These racers are doing better than me. Halcyon, look at these reads right now. Nice speed to hit that Piranha before it went under the Munchers. They could, they could go all the way here. Halcyon in the lower right just breezing through this. Now what? Poison Mushroom? Good reaction. Oh, my gosh. This is it. Whoa! Wow! Let's go! And one-shotting just about half of that section. That's how you win a race here. Halcyon moving on to the big boo boss. The lar large boo boss. Did they hit the checkpoint, though? Are you sure? Or can we, are we, are you sure? Okay. Looks like, looks like they got it. No other checkpoints yet on screen right now, but Halcyon, a full section ahead. That is the power of being able to just sight read these obstacles. Oftentimes these races come down to consistency, but in this case, Halcyon was able to make huge progress just by being able to just see it, do it. The jumps aren't that tricky, and if you can think fast enough and move quick enough, you, you too. You too can play. Play a Mario. Looks like we got grab blocks too. It's a block shredder here. Uh, being able to press L or R will spawn a grab block in Mario's hand. That's what Halcyon is throwing at the Big Boo. Meanwhile, having to jump on those piranhas as they go up and down. You can't stand on the pipe, obviously, because of the muncher. So you have to sort of time your hits. Something that could help a player in this situation... Um, Getting the uh, counting the number of hits and yo, no need to count. Uh, checkpoint fails for you fail me. I think that was the first try. They're moving on. Second section could catch up. It, it, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. We could get a good read. There's Quiet Mason on the checkpoint too. Good job. So okay, you know only what, what what's that? A difference of 40 seconds. Come on, come on, tight race. Halcyon still trying to count. Yeah, trying to count the number of bounces. You know, understanding the phase, there's like the Piranha Plant is up, it hesitates, and then it goes back down. And like, obviously, you know that. But having a real good sense of that duration. How long will it stay up versus how long will it uh, go down? Ha ha ha, hey babies. We got B2DE, lower left-hand corner, also on the H. Lots of H's going around here. Lots of H's. Maybe, uh, maybe someone trying to buy a vowel. You can't keep guessing H. This isn't this isn't Wordle. All the H's are in the right spot. Spot. You have to guess another letter. Don't know how many hits the uh, Boo is gonna take here. The assumption being maybe it's three, but you never know. Could be less. Could be more. Could be twenty. You never know. You fail me, Quiet Mason House. Uh, B two also doing well with this. B two on a good read right now. Ooh, oh, okay. They are, uh, their position, they saw their position was wrong, and uh, they weren't going to be able to make the next landing, so they hesitated and in the process got hit. You fail me going in the upper left. Okay, good job. Good job. Rough timing. This is a, this is a, uh, a, t a trick, a tech, 
as old as Mario itself is, how long is the piranha plant going to chomp for? Right? You know, I've talked before about a lot of things in, in, in Super Mario, in Kaizo, in games in general, are all sort of based in cycles. The piranha plant will go up and down for the same amount of time each time. The, uh, the ball and chain rotates around for the same amount of time. The thwomp, you know, resets and falls at the same duration. And being able to have a good intuitive sense of those cycles really help you out on a level like this. You're sort of playing to the future. And granted, this is much easier said than done, you know. It, it, easy for me to say. I'm sitting here not even playing the level, but uh, that is in general what you want. You fail me catching up and Quiet Mason with their own chance at it. But now we got two on the boss, so what's it going to be? Halcyon pulled out ahead with those good reads, but you fail me could uh, clutch it from behind here. Really, really nice f level. I love these kind of short, tricky, smooth types of levels. This is very, very cool. If you like this, if you're sitting around enjoying yourself, which I, I assume you are, uh, go and check out Rock and Roll Mario Show, set one or set two uh, from Kagen, both on SMW Central. They are simply amazing. Oh, Halcyon, I think they, uh, I think they miscounted the hits. Have you been counting the hits? I have not been counting the hits. I think uh, I think Halcyon thought the fight was ending and uh, deliberately dropped on the munchers. Why not both sets? That's true. Spend the whole weekend. It's like a it's like a festival. Rock and roll Mario Fest. Week one and two. Three stages. Fifty bands playing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Bottled water is $25. The guy at the t-shirt stand wouldn't give me change for a 20. He just glared at me until I walked away. Such an elegantly simple fight. You fail me, Halcyon, going through right now. And there it is! Halcyon making it. Okay, so the uh, so Halcyon managed to clutch it out with the reeds. Good job. Today, today the, uh, the good sight reeds won the day, and that gave Halcyon just a little bit of extra time. B2DE catching up onto, this, uh, onto the boost section. Nicely done. Looking for a second place now, and Halcyon taking first. Well done. Maybe looking to build the streak back up. They were, uh, they had, Halcyon had about a five streak going before, till they were thwarted. And now it's B2 and You Fail Me, and look out for Revelug in the lower right. Yeah, you know, we, I feel like we've all got ripped off for about, if you go to music, if you see music, we've all got ripped off for about 20 bucks at some point, you know. In fact, I'm sure it's been more than 20 bucks for me. We got Quiet Mason. All right, everybody. Quiet Mason, you fail me. B2, Revelug. Everybody fighting the boss. Second place is uh, is the real, the real second place. You know, it's just like they say. And uh, keep in mind too, the players do have the uh, the mushroom power up, but they need to keep the damage boost until the end of the fight. So if they take a hit too early, they gotta just jump in a pit. Uh, reason being is because when the fight is over, all the sprites on screen will disappear and Mario will have nowhere to land except for the Dangerous Muncher platform, which then they will spend that hit. Common thing, I'm sure you're all used to it, but I like to try to get in the weeds for folks who might be super new to Kaizo. Get some hype in chat for your favorite racers. And second favorite, even. You know, we can go for third or fourth favorite, too. It's all good. We don't even really need to rank people like that, but just get some hype if you want it. I like that this fight is, again, just, like, elegantly simple. It's really, what you see is what you get here, and yet, it's got a really tricky amount of tech. You might have guessed by now, 
if you've solved today's uh, Junior Kaizo Jumble, that uh, this level is a tribute to... Is it storks? I never get them right. Is it storks or apes and crocodiles or is it elephants and snakes and, you know, the in inglorious ignoble plants or whatever the level is? A uh, common thing for Morsel. Morsel likes to use the, uh, the piranha plants. And really, I think it's lovely because what's more classically Super Mario than a piranha plant? Oh, is it? Okay, you're talking Thwomp Castle. Okay, I was thinking of a different Morsel level, but word oh quiet mason oof i think they got all the hits but they died right at the end yeah okay so yeah that i was thinking of ignoble plants you're doing thwomp castle with the piranhas in the style of ignoble plants hence the name royal gardens it all makes sense that that's that's a good good lore good lore but yeah what's more classically super mario than piranha plants i mean that's that's the that's the thing. They're in like every game. They're as old as Mario One. Heck, how many times have we all had to endure that one guy that's like, yeah, it's obviously fake Mario One speedrun. I mean, he jumped right through the piranha plant. Like, I played this game since I was a kid, and there's no way you can just land on the edge of the pipe like that. I know. Me and my brother beat this in like fourth grade, and I, I haven't touched it since. Yo, uh, extra spot. Thank you so much for the gifts up to Kagan. I appreciate that. We got some fresh new ROM hack race emotes. If you care to try them out. Hey, try them out. Put some hype up for Quiet Mason. Nicely done. Yo, sneaking up from behind in some cases. You fail me. Had been on that boss a little bit longer. But uh, Quiet Mason got it first. Nice job. Oh, Raspy. I, I said X-Ray Spy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yo, GG, Quiet Mason. Still looking for the podium. You fail me, B2DE, and Revelug. And many more. Yeah, sorry, I just looked right over and it said it said X X Ray Spy. That's kind of a cool name though, you know, maybe maybe you should try it. <laughs> Ask me what you should change your Twitch name to. Hey, look out, B2, D E81, and there's our podium. Nicely done, nicely done. Halcyon, Quiet Mason, B2. Uh, granted, you know, what what are we, 15 minutes? These are all good players. You're seeing good racers race against other good racers in the race. Oh, nice Revelug, that ending. Oh, that was really good. Remember I was talking about uh, having an intuitive sense of your of your iframes, uh, or cycles, rather? That's another thing to have a good intuitive sense of. What happened was Revelug touched the muncher, and they knew the fight was about to end, and they also knew that they might not be able to stand there long enough. As soon as the fight goes, it ends. But before that, you have a little bit of time to walk. So what they did was they just got some speed and leaped up in the air, allowing the fight to end before they would actually come back down. That's a very smart thing to do. Classical Super Mario kind of move, good presence of mind. And I wanted to point that out because it could save your butt. Try that, right? It could save your butt in certain situations. Have a sense of your iframes and know like when to just get out of there. Cycles. Everything is cycles, man. You fail me cycling in. Stu, Louis Duce, RB Pimlico. Everybody spinning right round. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's the Big Boo's movement is a cycle. When he's going to be in a certain position. The piranha plants up, down, up, down. That's a cycle. You know, the, the iframes is a knowable amount of time. That's where intuition, that's the sort of thing that people say, oh, well, you should practice Kaizo, practice, you know, do this, do this. That's one of the things you're building is a sense of that intuition, right? You know how many iframes you have. Use them. Use them all. Yo, Revelog, thank you so much for the raid. Good job. Good job tonight. 
We got also Jank Pickle, Germ Dove, and Muzzle. Second section. And you're seeing the four on the boss. I like this boss, man. You know, every time I think that I've seen it all with Big Boo or Wendy or Lemmy fights or whatever, every time I think I've seen it all, someone comes up with something new. You failed me. Nicely done. Nicely done. Whoa! Louis Doucet, too? Jeez, that was almost a photo finish. Quick. Quick stuff tonight. Sub-20s all around. Good job, Louis Doucet. We got Germ Dove, Jank Pickle coming in. Yo, this, this might be a quick race tonight. Y'all are doing very, very well. We schedule about two hours for these broadcasts every Saturday night, and you can join us right here at 8 o'clock p.m. Um, but uh, we never know. You know, sometimes we have easier levels. Sometimes we have harder levels, and it looks like everybody is smashing through this one tonight. Makes for an exciting race, you know. If you want to learn a little bit more about what we're doing, and uh, maybe sign up for yourselves if you want to try it out, or check out any of our uh, backlog of levels from all 183 weeks, check out romhackraces.com, our very official website. It's very official. Hmm. Yes. Built with love by D to the 4th, and... Uh, it's got all our stuff, it's got the patches, it's got sign-up sheets, it's got info about our Discord if you want to jump on and talk shop with us. Because, uh, shucks, we might we might have some solid gamers playing through this level here faster than you can say Manzai Comedy. Hey, there's still time. <laughs> there's, there's always time to play a ROM hack race level. You can always check it out on the website, play it for yourself anytime. When I was a kid, you know, this makes me think. When I was a kid, I, this is kind of silly. It, it was something I, I think I, I, my grandpa gave it to me or something. Uh, when I had a, when I was a kid, I, I liked chess, and I had this uh, set of cards that was uh, move by move. Some of the games, um, the the Bobby Fischer, Boris Spassky games, that was like really popular in like the kind of Cold War era chess and that kind of thing. And they made these set of cards that had all the moves, and so you could sit there by yourself with with all your friends by yourself in your room with your chessboard and your big thick glasses and uh, you could go through the game play by play and you could play the, 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 the famous game and you know you could do that in a way but in a much cooler way on rum hack races you could uh, you could go and like try try your skills and go and download the patch right and it's not all about competition don't forget but you could try the level and time yourself like try an old one time yourself and then compare it to the leaderboard and see what you would have done. Sometimes that can be a good way to uh, shake out some nerves, you know? Like, like you, you know for a fact how you play when you're relaxed. And sometimes, you know, competition can be tough to get that relaxation. I know. Me too. RB Pimlico? Could it be? Nice. Nice. GG, RB Pimlico. Well, hey, that's really cool. You can even submit your times on the website to keep track. So if you want your own little ROM hack race scorebook that you control yourself, you can do that on the website. That's really cool. Thanks for that, D4. Another, another great feature from D2 the 4th. That's D to the 4th on Patreon. We got Muzzle coming in lower right. It's nice to see some light again. I love these big windows. Muzzle, we got Jank Pickle, we got Stew, we got Germ Dove. I'm glad you get to see the front of the level again. Hey, okay. Uh, I have I have been handed an, a very important sort of gold envelope here. I will open it up now from Dr. No. Uh, tech staff, ROM Hack Race is our wonderful ROM Hack Race tech staff, uh, has a question, and we'd like to get a, get a read from the community for everybody. Would you be interested in a way to get all the levels in a season in one download? Let's say you want all the ROM Hack Race season eight levels, right? It's a good season. You know, the writing was on point. A lot of the jokes really landed. Season 8, say you wanted that, right? Click one button, swoop, you get all of the patches, and there you are. What if you could click 
one file, and suddenly the one legal ROM that you have becomes 12 fresh ROM Hack Race levels. Wouldn't that be cool? How do you feel about that? What, 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 would, you, what would you say to a, a big time offer like that? I know it's not a lifetime supply of Da Vinci's Fancy Yellow Mustard or anything, but what is in this weird world? Would make it a lot easier to, uh, you know, get yourself some ROM Hack Race levels. Try them out. I cannot stress enough how cool it is to beat a level and win. And really, truly win. If you play a tough hack, sometimes, eh, you know, you beat three levels, but then it get, got really hard and you didn't actually beat the hack, and then you feel like, oh, I didn't do anything. But you did. Don't cheat yourself out of that doing of things. Play a ROM hack race level instead. Then once you win, it's over. You did it. There's no other hack. There's no other level. You completed the challenge. So, uh, must there be more? There, there mustn't. Well, that, that's not true either. There could be more. But the more is what you make of it. It's like buying a bunch of modeling clay. You, you know, you buy the clay, but you gotta make this. You gotta make the sculpture. We got Ender of Games coming in here. Muzzle, Jank Pickle, and Germ Dove working on the boss. Uh, Jank Pickle might be trying to rebuild their router from spare Lego parts in the drawer. That's okay, these things happen. If anybody could do it. <laughs> hey, there they are. All right, Jank Pickle. Oh, no, oh, they were almost there. Wait, they're back. They're here. All right, they're here. We're all here. All right, just checking. Oh, yo, muzzle, sad and I. Right at the right at the door, oof, door and I. Yo, very very cool level. Once again, can we get some hype for Kagem in chat? Really really lovely here. I, I again I I like to use this phrase. Maybe it sounds I don't know highfalutin or whatever. Elegant simplicity is something that I, I always appreciate in levels and art. Ah, there, Jank Pickle finally taken to death. I haven't seen anyone die to those poison flowers yet. But, uh, yeah, el elegant simplicity. There, there's a certain, I mean, there's, there's basic, there's utilitarian simplicity. You know, it just serves the function. Um, and then there's elegant simplicity, you know? And, and I, I like... I like that. I think this level has is a good example of that. It's simple, but it does so in an elegant way. And not not all simplicity is elegantly simple, right? There, there, that's a particular flavor. It's good for a race too. Check out the range of times, right? We got some really fast clears. We had a super good player who one shot some obstacles, and then you know, still here, 25 minutes in, we're battling for the second section and the boss. Nice, nice race length. I like that. It can be very, very tough. You know, some people ask, like, well, do you only do hard levels? You know, do you only do easy levels? It can be tough to get a good medium, and that's why we came up with the ranking system. Uh, you know, longest section, hardest trick to figure out, hardest trick to execute, just to give you some metrics. Because um, it can be very subjective, and we want to let the makers make what they want to make, right? You know, some makers specialize in harder item abuse, some makers like platforming and stuff, so... You know, we, we want to leave that open and, and kind of let that vision shine out from the maker themselves. Um, but this is a really nice, I think this is just a nice medium here. Also, you know, I feel kind of rude. How are you doing? How's your Saturday? What, what's up? I feel like I haven't really, I want to say hi to the, the, the Kaizo playing community and population. I, I, I feel like I've been absent for low these past seven or eight or nine or ten days. I, uh... I, I, I have just fallen in love with Tunic. No spoilers in chat, please, please. Um, but, uh, yeah, I wanted to, like, say hi, and hi, I'm still here doing Kaizo. Uh, if you if you have not checked out Tunic yet, I I can't recommend it enough. I really, truly can't. No, oh, Germ Dove! Oh. Oh. Once the uh, camera freezes at the end there and the whistle goes, Beow! 
Uh, Mario just, you can't control Mario anymore, so if you're in the air, you'll just right into a pit. Oh. Oh, I think it broke the music. Oh, dear. Yo, Om Nom Nom, thank you so much for the 24 months and for being a super important part of Rom Hack Race staff. We really appreciate what you do. Nice redemption, Germ Dove. Well played, well played. Good redemption arc. You like to see it. Germ Dove with the sub 30 minutes. Very solid. Has there been a standard non Kaizo Rom Hack Race? Um. Yes, in the past we have done a separate race. Uh, we called it Mystery Mondays, and we did a separate race on Mondays for non Kaizo. The Saturday races have traditionally been at least Kaizo beginner. That that sort of they they are the Kaizo races. Um, but yeah, in the, in the past we have. I think you know in in, in so, yeah that's true. You're right. You're right. You know what, Max, with the with the big info, uh, you're right. There was a standard. Hard level on Halloween. That's right. Yo, yo, yolpen, yolpi, yolpen gambler. The individual who's awesome, whose name I can't pronounce. That's right. They did do a, they did do a standard hard level. That's true. We did do the Mystery Mondays, but you're absolutely right. Check that one out on the website. That's a quality level. That's true. We did do that one time. That was kind of a special occasion because they are a maker of. And it's it's that's kind of like getting like Steven Spielberg to make a, a short film for your college class. You know what I mean? Like they they really uh, they're they're a maker of immense reputation. So it was uh, it was kind of a special event. Oh, that's neat. Hey yo, uh, according to our friend yours and mine. Helping everybody run behind the scenes here. Dr. No, we do actually have a couple standard levels on the calendar ahead. One from Margo and one from Daiso Devon. So, yeah. Heck, yeah. Um, you know, we, we are ROM hack races. Not specifically Kaizo Super Mario hard item shell jump ROM hack races, right? Um, and, you know, the, those types of levels open up a lot of possibilities for races. So, uh, ah, heck, yeah. <gasps> Excuse me. Oh, man. That's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. I can't. Can't believe it. <laughs> Germ Dove. Well, thanks for teaching us. I didn't know that. Thank you for the raid. Uh, thank you for the, the explanation, you know. Uh, Germ Dove, you, you did it, so we don't have to. Thanks for taking one for the team. We got Endless Ascent, Ender of Games, Jank Pickle, and Muzzle working on the boss. Ender, looking like they might have a door in their future. Nicely articulated jumps. Oof, Jank Pickle, so close. Nice touch with these uh, these note blocks. <clears throat> Get a chance to talk about the note blocks a little bit. Uh, where Ender is in the upper right. <clears throat> they, uh, if you hit the note block by jumping on it. It bounces the mushroom, or the, the fire flower that's on the side. Oh, Ender is respawning. Oh, that's clever. I think, yeah, Ender is respawning the fire flower. Or, yeah, the piranha plant, rather. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was a really good strat, though. 500 cool points for Ender of Games. The only person I've seen try that. <clears throat> and that's really good presence of mind. Right? Take a look at that, because, I yeah, that's good, good, good Cosmic Brain presence of mind, because it gets you a couple extra chances, it lets you just hang out and kind of line things up a little bit, make sure you're ready to go. Anytime you can be looking for stuff like that, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, right, and that's deliberate on Kagim's part, right? That you you put that in there intentionally. As a maker, it's helpful to know how the player is able to move the screen in any given situation. Like the fact that you can jump back where you were from the note block. As a maker, you should be aware of things like that. And Kagim is here, and it's just a good example, right? Um, 
as a maker, you should be aware of things like that, and you should always try to cheese your own levels. And sometimes you might find something and decide, oh, okay, I want to keep that. Sometimes cheese is just eh, an easier way or a backup strat. And so, you know, as a maker, you're always deciding how tight to ratchet everything down. Do I never allow them to respawn anything or go back or, or you know, try again or line themselves up or anything like that? Or do I let them do that all the time or only in specific moments? And where do you put that and when and why? And uh, these questions, you know, keep you up at night. <laughs> but always, always try to cheese your own design. You know, or uh, if you make something and you think it's good, you know, come back to it a day later after you haven't been thinking about it for a while, and then play it as though it weren't yours, as though it were somebody else's, and think, okay, I'm just going to break this completely, right? You know, really, like, try to get into that and try to just, whatever, if you want them to jump to the right, just don't do that. You know, if you want them to be over here, don't do that. If you always do it by standing on the far left, stand on the far right. You know, check those positions and look at how Mario's movement moves the camera. Yeah, that's true. Iconic, iconic morsel boss music. Also, speaking of this music, uh, how is everybody liking the new Kirby? I haven't gotten it for myself, but I have been watching all my favorite streamers play it. It looks cute and fun. Oh, jank pickle. Looks like it's big, big Kirby adventure. You gotta, you gotta concentrate, Kirby. You gotta concentrate and turn into a car, Kirby. You gotta do it. You gotta, gotta, gotta turn in, gotta turn into a car, Kirby. Yo, this is a concept for a concept level for a hacked up Kaizo covers. Cool. I like I like that idea. I uh, I like that idea very much. Pastiche. Oh, yo, Jank Pickle making the way to the boss. Nicely done. Uh, pa Pastiche definitely has its place. I'm thinking uh, Super Continent World from Morsel. Um, that can be really really cool. And I, I think sometimes actually. That sort of thing, sort of covering, is, like, missing in Kaizo. And that's weird to say because there are a million clones of popular hacks. You, you know what I mean? Like, but but those are clones, right? They, they don't sort of, like, reinterpret. Where this definitely is like, ah, you're doing the morsel thing, but you're doing it in, in, in your way. And that's a very, that's an interesting blend for a maker and a cool line to walk. I'm interested to see that. Hey, yo. Well deserved. The only Cosmic Brain player out here today. And they're ender of games with the big respawn strats and it's boss time. Really nice jumps, too, from Endless Ascent right now. Ouch. They had some really good little left-rights in there. So keep in mind the uh, the grab blocks coming from L and R, and that just adds kind of another input in between there. They also it's possible to kill a piranha plant with a grab block accidentally, um, which would be helpful except for the fact that it prevents you from having anywhere to land.
How are y'all doing? Doing okay, chat? Feeling feeling all right? Feeling good? Thanks for spending a little bit of your Saturday with us. If you're new, we do these every week, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Haha, <laughs> yeah. Change change the radio. This is rock and roll. It's all right. Does little Mario not have the block spawning ability? No, no, no. That's that's not a not a vanilla behavior. Oh, you mean in the level? Actually, that I don't know. But it wouldn't matter, yeah, because you you wouldn't be able to last. Muzzle, all right. GG. Nice. GG, muzzle. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a question for Kagem. Uh, I, if small Mario in this level s spawns blocks. But in the vanilla game, no, Mario spawns nothing. Yo, Seo Cadelic joins us in the lower right hand corner. I ooh, they have a nice bright look at that nice bright shade on their capture. I really like that. Ender of Games, yo, getting a little fancy here. Endless Ascent and CO working on the not boss and Ender and Jank working on the boss. That would be kind of interesting, though. That gets me thinking. A level that were like this with lots of piranha plants and everything... Except you could spawn blocks, or maybe you could spawn them in a limited way. Like, uh, I don't know, like, you start with a power-up, and you get three blocks, and then you have to, like, go over, like, run over a tile to, like, refill your block throwing. Um, and then you have to use them to, like, fight through, because the number of plants would be just overwhelming otherwise. Just throwing that out there. You know, just throwing, throwing that out there as a possible Mario idea. Wow, everybody has been doing really well tonight. 40 minutes in, we're already seven racers left from 16. That's impressive. Again, the, the skill ceiling of everyone has risen sharply just over the course of doing these. I'm always impressed. Y'all are really good at this. Too bad you already have an idea. That's good, though. Now you have two ideas. That's one more idea than you had before. I don't even know where to put all these extra ideas. Nice moves from Endless Ascent, man. I hope they get this. Ah! It's a little bit trickier than you might think to not kill the piranha plant with a grab block. You have a small amount of time between them while you're in the air to uh, worry about that. Another thing the players need to do is controlled jumps. 
Um, if if the if you are just bouncing on these piranhas and you're holding A the whole time or B, whatever jump button. But if you're holding the jump button the whole time and you're only doing full bounces, the cycles aren't going to work. And you're not you're gonna eventually find yourself without a place to land. And so the way to combat that is to control the jump so that you're like only bouncing on the piranha plants when they're there and you're not wasting any of that time hanging in the air when they're already chomping. I'm not sure if I'm making sense with this right now, but by cutting the vertical of your jump and not doing full bounces, you can fit inside the cycle more. If you just bounce like on, on one piranha and then you go over to the other side, like one piranha, left piranha, you can't just go left, right, left, right. You can't do that because the timing isn't going to work out. So you have to use shorter vertical jumps and like one or two bounces sometimes. If you land on a piranha right when it's extended fully up, ha ha ha, hey Beavis. If you land on it though, you have two bounces. You can go click, click, and then jump. Maybe even three if you're really, really fast. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know the max you would get. It looks like you could probably get three though, visually. Um, but that would require landing, basically dropping down as the piranha is rising up instead of after it's already extended. But that's what's going on here, and that's what makes this part really difficult. If you think, oh, why aren't they just jumping left, right, left, right, left, right? That's why. It's because full jumps on that timing would never actually win. And that's a little bit about controlled jumps. You always want to do a big jump, but then cut it. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like how you, if you want to make cookies, you roll out a bunch of dough and then you stamp out the cookies. Do the same thing for your jump. Like, do like a big jump, but then when it's time to cut it, cut it. I don't like that. I've just described doing a short jump, but in like a stupid backwards way. But I think that that's valuable <laughs> to conceptualize the game in that way you want all the jump you, you want all the height you want all the momentum then you want to dial that back into what you need you can't get more but you can get less it's like whittling you know you can you can start with a big block of wood and then you only take off what you need you can't put that back on in a manner of speaking but you can take it off this is the second storks level that has a rom hack race level made in its honor F2, that's right, Shakespearean Lines, uh, is a tribute to the uh, the Dilbert Fast Platforms level. Yeah, that is true. That was a, that was a good level. I, I want to say probably, I don't know, what maker do you think has the most levels made, like, tribute type levels? You know, is it is it Grand Pooh World? Is it Storks? Is it Invictus? Is it is it Takamoto? You know, World Peace, oh yeah. Right, world peace. The Simpsons of Kaizo. The Simpsons of Mario ROM hacking. Yeah, right? You can't unwhittle a block. In the same way as in in the same way, you can't give yourself extra momentum or height once you're already in the air. Say he carved it himself from a bigger spoon. I could carve a smaller spoon out of a bigger spoon. That's true, we all can. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I hadn't really taken note of that, but uh, yeah, endless endless ascent may have may have been uh, caught up in a little bit of a quandary here. It's easy to make an assumption like this, but yeah, it is possible to if you sp normally you can't spin off a note block; they only bounce you. However, if you press the A button. On, I think, the frame that you land, there's like a frame. I'm not sure which of the frames, but it's one of them. It's a frame where you will spin if you do that. However, furthermore, additionally, I don't know if the ROM hack race's base ROM 
patches that behavior out or not. Um, but in any case, in the vanilla game, it would be a one-frame spin. It's a cool trick, but here's the thing. You have to, along with your skills and knowledge of the game, you have to play a little bit of psychology of the maker. If, if Endless Ascent really thinks that we need to do the one-frame spin to get out of that, you got to question that by thinking, would they really make me do that? You know, would, would they would they really actually make me do that? Uh, sometimes the answer would be yes. In some shell hacks or item abuse hacks or whatever, I think, oh, geez, there's no way it's a turn back P-switch drop. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. But right in a level like this, especially based on everything else that you've seen, playing a little bit of psychology with the maker and just thinking like, OK, try to get in their head. Like, would they actually make me do that trick here right now? Could be a good way to question your assumptions. C.O. Kadelic, questioning all the assumptions. Come and question what's real with us and C.O. Kadelic every Saturday at 8. Making their way to the boss. Ah, uh, okay, we don't... Okay, ROM Hack Race's base ROM does not patch that trick out with the spin, but this isn't ROM Hack Race base ROM. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, new base ROM and ASAR patches didn't play nicely. But that's a good time to plug. We do have the ROM Hack Races base ROM. If you're having fun, you want to hack some Super Mario Kaizo world, and uh, you would like a little pre-made sort of canvas to start on, try the ROM Hack Race base ROM. You get extra graphics, quality of life patches, and everything is just all set up there really nice for you. Uh, it takes a lot of the prep work out of creating ROM hacks, and uh, you can start making something sleek and modern right away without having to add in a lot of uh, stuff. Now featuring full documentation on a neat little wiki and on GitHub. So we hope that can be a valuable resource. Big, big, big shout outs to the tech staff for that one, Ampersam especially doing a lot of work. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I say thanks. It's great. It, it helps me out. Uh, it helps everybody out. Hey, there it is. Endless Ascent made it. They have ascended. And now it's everybody at the boss. I really like the look of all four screens on the boss it's like uh there's just something very aesthetically pleasing about four marios going boing 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 back and forth like that oh way to break the aesthetics ender of games with your big win good job good win gg and all that we gotta get someone else on this fourth section though for the aesthetics all right attention deficit dad Let's go. Oh, hey. Hi, hi. It's Thalia. How are you doing? Hi, hello from Rom Hack Races. Welcome. Looks like they're doing well. Second section. Watching out for piranhas. Back in the Kirby soup. You mean my following list this weekend? Can we all just get one big Poyo in chat? For those that have been playing it, how do you like it? It looks cute and nice. I've been watching some streamers play it. It's fun. This it looks nice. It's, it's, it's Kirby. I don't know really what to say. It like, doesn't really seem like it. You know, it's just Kirby. You do Kirby things. We all love Kirby. We love his little cute things that he does, like he floats in an inner tube and whatnot. I like that about it. Just little wholesome little interactions. Just fun. Freaking Kirby, fun little puff thing. Do you think Kirby is rubbery or fuzzy or like velveteen? What sort of texture is Kirby's body? I know that's a strange question to ask and a, a borderline lewd way to phrase it, but 
the, the deadpan delivery of this joke isn't helping anything at all. But what is the texture? Like fondant? Yum. Like a rubbery, like a, see, I've always assumed like a smooth rubbery balloon. Like a wet dolphin. Is Kirby a dolphin? Is Kirby just, whoa. Wait, they, aren't dolphins, they don't have bones, right? They're made of cartilage. Is Kirby just made of cartilage? I don't think Kirby has any bones. How would you? How does the Kirby cheeseburger power work? I almost said Kirby cheeseburby, but I didn't, okay? Then I did to make you laugh. Oh, sharks. Thank you. Thank you, sharks. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't... It's tough to tell the difference between dolphins and sharks, you know? The train shark show at SeaWorld would be a lot scarier. Ender of Games. Yo, thank you for the raid. Well, that's good. We got a special. One Kirby cheeseburger with extra cheese. And a side of uh, tomato ketchup. Like those little M tomatoes. What does the M on the tomato and Kirby stand for? Does it stand for tomato or something else? Maximum? That doesn't start with M. <laughs> what the heck? Should be tomato. That would make sense. Does Kirby eat? Nobody wants to fight Maximum Tomato. Sergeant Iceberg Lettuce. Does Kirby even like tomatoes? Well, like, okay, no, wait, like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Does Kirby eat? Yes, Kirby eats. See, you ask it as, th uh, you say that as though it's obvious, but I'm not as sold. Kirby inhales things, and then they disappear, right? They disintegrate to them and takes their power, but that power can easily be spit back out. So it would seem that Kirby doesn't eat as much as Kirby, like, breaks things down at an atomic level. You know, uh, d d does a fire eat, right? A fire just breaks things down. It consumes, Kirby consumes, but does Kirby eat? Exactly, does, exactly. Kaigum said it even better. Does he derive nutrition from the enemies he eats? Well, the, the, the difference between eating and breaking things down at an atomic level is that when you eat, you get the nutrients from it. That's what I'm saying. I was like, the Kaigum's way of wording that is better. Does Kirby get nutrition? If Kirby eats, then he would get some form of nutrition from that. You know, like the the uh, the atoms go into Kirby. They get broken down and they become one with Kirby. But when but but is what Kirby is doing to enemies is that that <laughs> I'm just trying to make you laugh with stupid junk.
You can beat a Kirby game without using a single power-up. If so, that would imply the powers are entirely optional and done out of cruelty. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. That's that's also true. Like Kirby doesn't need to Kirby doesn't need to need to eat. I'm just curious. It's not important whether or not he needs that, like to me. I'm just curious. So yeah, he very well could just be a sort of a sort of adorable black hole. A sort of sentient, adorable black hole son. Who's come to wash away the rain. Well, that's little curves. I'm not. I'm not saying there isn't a connection. I'm just saying. Let's be. Let's be distinct. Let's be accurate. Let's be scientific about it. I think Kirby is sometimes one of the most strangely dark Nintendo characters. They never, like... There's always... It's always, like, undertones with Kirby, you know? Like, from what I've seen in the new Kirby Adventure video game for the Nintendo Switch Entertainment System, is, like, half the time, you're going around and doing cute, wholesome stuff. Like, finding duckies or... You know, just going on a roller coaster and having a nice day. And the other half of the time, you're, like, just kicking the crap out of everything that comes your way. And destroying anything that gets in your path. And wrecking the terrain. You know? And I just I feel like there's just undertones there with Kirby. Sort of dark undertones. But Kirby doesn't eat the ducks. I haven't seen Kirby eat a single duck. Not once. I don't think Kirby would do that. I don't think our boy would roll that way. I think you got him all wrong. Not on screen, just in your imagination, huh? Well, that sounds like a pretty dark place. No, I'm, j I'm just joking. This is a joke. I think I think you're the one cooking up the the dark grim dark fanfics there, pal. <laughs> now nah, I'm just fooling around. Kirby's fun. Good good times. Good ducks. We still got endless. We still got Jank Pickle, Seal Cadelic, working on the boss, and uh, ha ha, it's Talia. Working on the second section. Doing a good job. Kirby is just, I feel, a character that compels you to ask a lot of questions. Thanks for that music break. Doc, changing the radio station for us. Thanks. Appreciate that. It's a good song. Long time of that song is a long time. What's a Waddle D? What's like? You know, okay, hold up. I just want to give a shout out. I know this is stupid, but I, we're talking about Kirby, Kirby music, and I gotta give a shout out to my man. Well, I don't even know if he's a man. My seemingly male presenting genderless cloud with an eyeball, Cracko, my favorite Kirby character. I don't know if he makes an, if they make an appearance in uh, New Kirby or not, but I hope so because I freaking love Krako. They're my favorite. They're just cool. I just really like them. Cool cloud with a lightning bolt with an eye and it zaps you. That's awesome. That's a really cool boss fight thing. So just wanted to give shout outs to Krako. Always having my back. <laughs> really appreciate you, man.
Well, it's all good. It's an exciting boss fight, boss battle soundtrack. I think uh, I think it's nice to switch it up every now and then. Here's another thing I noticed too, uh, which the racers have probably noticed long ago, but I just noticed from watching. Um, the Piranha Plant cycles are sort of misaligned. They don't always go like one up, one down, one up, one down. You always have a landing, but they don't move like in perfect sync with each other, which is another difficult factor that is causing the players to have to adjust their jumps and momentum as they go. H for Fernap, let's go. The poor Blimp boss. Oh, yeah, I remember that Blimp. Yeah, I do remember. I remember that Blimp boss. I mean, you know what I really want back is Kirby's Dream Course. And it, granted, it never left. I can have it back any time. But I love Kirby's Dream Course. I rented that game from the video store all the, all the day back in the year. Endless Ascent. Nicely done. Just shy of the sub hour, but a solid clear. Good job. Good job. GG. I bet we're going to get some more now. Clears are coming in. There is. There is a Kirby's Dream Course editor. And I messed around with it. It works great. It's awesome. It does just what you want to do. It's kind of tedious to work with. Because you basically just click on every tile in the game. Like in the world, in the course, and just associate what that is. Is it a slope? Is it a big slope? How high is it? What enemy? Um, oh, sorry, pal. Oh, uh, I thought I thought you were taking damage. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, might might have. Uh, I didn't see what happened there. Sorry about that, pal. Uh, didn't didn't quite get it at the end. Either fell off or took damage slightly before the uh, time up on the level. There's a few minutes where you're vulnerable and sometimes they can get you right at the end. Oh yeah, looking for the midair. Yeah, sometimes when you clear a boss you just freeze in midair. This did not have that. Sorry. But yeah, there's a Kirby's Dream Course editor. It works really well. It's just kind of tedious. And there's a Game Grumps a uh, uh, hack that someone made of Kirby's Dream Course with a lot of challenge packs. And I think that might be the only thing that was made with that editor. Um, I haven't seen any others. Ah, uh, yeah, for vertical level. You freeze on the vertical. That's right. But I don't know. It'd be cool to see a Kirby's Dream Course hack sometime. I don't think I have the patience to build one, though. Sometimes the important thing in uh, in this boss fight here is not to go for the boo, but to just focus on getting your landings right. Sometimes if you try to do you know too many things at once, it can throw you off a little bit. So passing up on an opportunity to hit the boo in favor of making sure that you have a good landing and bounces can be a uh, better priority. We got Fernap in the upper left. We got Ty in the upper right. Jank Pickle, Seal Cadelic, the bottom half working on the boss. And we got you all, and I'm really grateful for that. I hope you're having a nice evening. Thanks for making Rom Hack Races a little part of your Saturday.
Yeah, um, for, for what it's worth, actually, um, at least in my perspective, and I think for the rest of Rumhack Race um, staff, we wouldn't allow a level that stole your progress if you paused out, right? Like, like if you have a checkpoint or whatever, and pausing out would reset that or whatever, uh, I, I would, I would not, we would not allow a level like that. Um, specifically because one, people could accidentally do that. I've done that accidentally where if you just accidentally hit exit or whatever, um, you know, it could happen accidentally and lose some progress and it's not a, you know, it's not a cool way to troll folks in, um, in a, in a, in a race level in particular. So, well, for, for real, I mean, for, for what it's worth, that's, that that is true information. I don't feel like I'm really spoiling anything or whatever about the level. That is true information about the level and, and any future ROM hack race levels. Is your your progress will be saved should you happen to exit. Just in the off chance that there's a soft lock or something. Um, resetting the entire console would would erase it. Uh, which is why, you know, we try to go the extra mile to prevent soft locks that would have you do that. But even then you get soft lock, pause off. Tough stuff, yo. Pretty tricky. I don't think what else is coming up on the uh, on the calendar. We do have April Fool's Day coming up, but I think really, I think the world is not really down for April Fools this year. You know, it's been a kind of a rough. Like we all want, if you're gonna, if we're gonna do some April Fools, it better be a joke that we're all in on and can have fun on together. You know what I mean? I feel, I feel like the whole vibe around. Around April Fool's Day is a little bit less, less hype in recent years. We got Sometimes I look out and I think, you know, we we got enough fools. They seem to have invaded every other month. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yo, excellent. I was actually, uh, I was wondering, I wanted to tell everybody who the maker next week was. And it's uh, Kanangaro, maker of Short and Sweet. Excellent hack. SMW Central for that. Uh, we will do that again, yeah, next Saturday. Sorry, there, there's only so much play-by-play -play I can do on exactly the same obstacles. And that's not a bad thing, but uh, it does mean that at a certain point in the night, I just kind of run out of uh, instant, immediate play-by-play -play commentary. If y'all have any questions or anything... Uh, would like to learn more about Kaizo, uh, you know, making the mechanics in this level or anything. Please feel free to ask. Uh, I would down to down to help anybody learn. 
that has a desire to learn Kaizo and improve your skills a little bit. And I don't know, just thanks for being a part of Rum Hack Races and the Kaizo community at large. Don't forget to if you well, don't forget to go follow the racers if you're looking for a little bit more fun uh, in the Kaizo community on Twitch. There are a ton of really cool people playing Kaizo, more of them all the time, and uh, you maybe won't click away from a new friend. I want to try to get the racers as much uh, ups, I guess, hype as possible. They're putting themselves on the line, coming out. You know, every, everybody wants to show show what they've got. You know, coming out to a race and. Uh, I think that should be rewarded. Go, uh, if you enjoyed somebody's performance or you thought they did a good job, if you go on their stream later and you tell them that, they'll be really happy. It's true. Just a little bit of a way to spread some good, some good energy. And right now, we don't really, uh... Yo! Oh, excuse me. All right. Stay stay put there. S uh, Jank Pickle, nice job. Nice job. Stay in put. Winning the level. Succeed by doing nothing. G G G J P. This leaves us with Fernap, uh, Hi Hi, it's Thalia, Attention Deficit Dad, and CO Cadelic. Attention Deficit on the first section, Fernap on the second, Thalia on the second section, and CO on the boss. Yeah, yo, I love. Can we, yeah, big thanks, th thanks for the shout outs for Kagem. Uh, check out Rock and Roll Mario Show again if you want more hacks from this maker. Uh, the windows here are just splendid. I love environments like this. I wish my living room looked like this. I want to I want to live in a giant place like this with these nice big windows, maybe some moss, a little bit of stone texture. Beautiful. There really is something to be said for environment in hacks. Being able to create a sense of atmosphere with your graphics, your palette choices. Sometimes even the movement and the theme in the in the level can contribute to that. A cave level that's claustrophobic, for example. In a way, I think the action here does sort of contribute the theme of the level visually and the action of the level visually uh, contribute to each other because you're doing a lot of sort of airy floating jumps, if that makes any sense. It feels airy. It feels like there's a lot of space in this area and you're sort of floating through it. Oh, tie his name with a hard T. Excuse me. My bad. Thank you for telling me. I appreciate that. Hey, hi, hi. It's Tal Talia. Sorry, I was saying Talia because the TH made me think tha. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I will, uh, I'll try to keep that in mind. And thanks for racing with us. I always really appreciate seeing new names show up. It's great. And uh, I'm really glad that Rumhack Races can, you know, get out a little bit. And other people are willing to check it out. And hopefully you can find a welcoming and fun community. <laughs> for my for my own part, I promise I will be back to Kaizo. I'm not I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. But I am on an extended vacation. I know uh, folks might be wondering at this point, but uh, I'm just playing Tunic a lot. I really like it. And I've kind of uh, low-key sworn off other games until I Managed to save the world. See yo, nicely done. See yo, good job. You know, CO Cadelic also makes a lot of levels 
that are in this kind of vein. Nice platforming, good vibes, good environment. Nicely done. Good job, Sio. Check out uh, Bun Bun World and Bun Bun World 2 if you want to get a little bit of Sio's work. A Sio Kagem collaboration could be pretty cool. I think Sio honestly has some of the best environments in, uh, in Kaizo. Their choice of palettes is really, really good. Yeah, I kind of mentioned that at the start. This is not this is a Kevin M port in the main area, but uh, Kagan mentioned they snuck a port into the credits. Oh, I was just kind of spitballing on that. Honestly, too, Endless, you, I think, were the only racer that did that, that respawn strat. And I actually thought that was really clever. That was put in there by the maker, and you, I think, were the only one that I saw find it. So you actually get some cool points for that one. I know it's like, you know, it's easy to feel like, ah, geez, there was an easier way I overcomplicated it. But, uh, you know, something that I'm learning, making me think of when I play like Tunic is like, doing it the hard way teaches you. You, you know, once, once you've done it the hard way, you've gotten good. If you did it the easy way, you just you got through. And might, you might have got good too. I'm not trying to undersell everybody else's achievements, but, you know. If, if you do it the hard way for a while, that, then you know, right? It's easier to learn down, right, than it is to learn up. You already learned the complex thing. You did it the tough way. Now it's easier. Oh, well, then you just cut out some of the difficulty. But it's harder always to learn up and accumulate new skills. All right, I'm just trying to be encouraging. If I could leave everybody with one takeaway about Kaizo and about themselves when it comes to rum hack races and stuff is you y'all are really good. You're good. You're better than you think you are. Everybody everybody plays better than they think they do and sometimes it's not even lack of skill but lack of insight or understanding, you know? Like I think more often than not, a player. Let me let me think of how I want to say this because I think this is an important point and I want to get it out to y'all. I think that more often than not, a player isn't bad or doing poorly mechanically with the controls. It's that there's something that they just kind of don't know about or like aren't noticing or or paying as much attention to. I think really like seven, eight times out of ten, it's that. And it's not that people play badly. So if I could leave you all with one takeaway, give you, be kind. You know, be kind to yourselves. I don't think anyone's being rude to themselves here. But be kind to my friends in the Kaizo community. And give yourself credit because not only is this stuff tough, but you're, playing, you're all playing better than you think you do. I sit here and watch so many people play Kaizo every week. Uh, on Twitch and on ROM hack races and stuff, and this stuff is so challenging. It's so freaking challenging, and it never stops being challenging. You're better than you think you are. Try to hang on to that. We got Fernap here. We got. Talia, uh, attention deficit data on the bottom, final three. And now we get to hang out in this nice, what, courtroom kind of section again.
that is always a joy to see. Endless. I really it's something I really like about commentating rom hack races week after week. Is you, yeah, exactly what you said. It's interesting to see how players develop consistent strats in diverging ways in real time. Absolutely. And that's also why I try to stress those kind of guiding principles like if you don't know what to do, removing the intricacy. Yeah, right? You try the simpler stuff, but then you have you, you wind up having to add intricacy to it. And that's that balance to strike. Um, but, you know, in, in general, like trying to remove inputs, inputs being sources of failure. But then again, right, like, like you experience, like sometimes you're kind of forced to add those. So I always, you know, try to get tricky not to get as tricky as you need to be. You know, that's that's always where it's at. Always be looking to be less tricky. And well, if I have to be this tricky, then OK. But I'd really be lazy, you know, be a play lazy, be play good. But when it comes to like thinking of strats and what to do and how to do that in the controls and how to input and everything, be lazy, be lazy. You know, you don't want to exert very much effort. Light touch, tap it in. How's your week, chat? You doing okay? Having fun? What are you what are you playing? What are you making, dreaming, doing? Yo Talia, nice job! Hey, they made it! Good job! Good job! A well-earned boss battle! Your reward, your eternal reward. Alright. And now they're just a few hops and skips and jumps and such away from victory. <laughs> Excuse me. Flipping the radio. Big shout outs to Kevin M on the port. Oh, I don't know. There's only so much play by play, like I said, I can do on on the same sorts of obstacles. Thanks for hanging out. I feel like we get we get into the chill portion of the evening. Hanging out, people playing Kaizo. Good times. What would be my strat on this boss? Um, super hyper accurate landings on the piranha plant. I think, like, I'm not playing it, so it's hard to, like, think about what my hands would do. But 
what I would do would be to really focus on little else other than staying on the piranhas and making sure my jumps are accurate, making sure I land. What I would be doing would be watching the piranha extend. The piranha extends and it goes up. I want to try to contact the piranha before it has fully extended upward. In so doing, I give myself the most amount of time to hang out on the top. I could get one, maybe two extra bounces um, instead of landing late. I want to try to land early, not too early. And what I would be doing would be focusing on that and pretty much the exclusion of all else. Um, the, the hits on the boss will happen. That's just something that's going to happen while you're going. And also, it's going to make the same pattern. Everything in this room spawns the same way every time. The piranhas are going to be there at the same moment. The boo is going to move in the same pattern, sweeping kind of shape across the screen. And so, if you do this over and over repeatedly, you will eventually start to notice moments where you have a good opportunity to hit. You might notice that sooner rather than later, or it might take you a little bit, but at some point, if you do the same thing, you'll get the same results, and so you'll start to see those moments of opportunity, and that's where you try to place the, the hit from the throw block. Uh, I think it's much more important in a fight like this, it's way more important to stay alive. <laughs> I know that sounds silly and redundant, but you're not going to have anything. You don't have a chance unless you stay alive. So staying alive is priority number one. Hitting the boo is not priority number one. Number two, maybe maybe number three, managing your momentum. Um, but play that way. Put, Make sure. Don't go for the hits. Um, I've, seen, I've seen players just try to immediately, as soon as the boo is there, go for the hit, go for the hit, go for the hit. And yeah, you're in a race. It might be fast or whatever. But you're losing focus on your position and you might be making compensations in your position in order to go for the hit don't do that stay alive first fight second and the more you can s divide up your gameplay like that and to focus on priorities i think you could do better one could This feels like a very morsel, uh, or not, well, morsel, obviously, but like a classic Kaizo boss fight. Except for the fact that you spawn the blocks with ASM. You know, just jumping between two piranhas forever is like very old school. I never really thought about this until tonight, uh, like right now, but Super Mario World is the first Mario game that allows you to interact with the piranha plants in some other way than just you get hit and die. Right? You couldn't do that in Mario 1. You couldn't do that in Mario 3. The piranhas in Mario 3 are just there to chomp you. But only in Mario World. I guess that's true for a lot of things because Mario introduced the spin jump. But piranhas in particular, there never was a way to land on a piranha without taking damage. Mario World lets you do that. Yeah, I get that. And this manipulating cycles and spawn where where and how an enemy spawns or Manipulating a cycle, which you couldn't do in this room, but manipulating a cycle so that, like, you're controlling when something spawns and thereby controlling its cycle, that's deep magic, and it takes a, it takes a lot. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel too bummed out about it because that's one of the most subtle bits of Mario Black Magic. Re honestly, it really is, and I was, and because of that, I wouldn't feel too bad about it. It can be difficult to tell 
even for the very, very best of us, it can be difficult to tell what is affecting what you're doing. Especially if you think you know, or it's a subtle edge case that only happens if you make one particular movement at a particular time. Um, it can be it can be difficult to figure out what is affecting what. I think for a situation like this, the best. The best option is to maximize your bounce time. You know, landing early on the piranha plant as it extends rather than later. And aiming to do that. Because it gets you those extra bounces and those bounces are stability. Those bounces allow you to check your position, reset your hand on the controller, generate a little bit of momentum in a given direction. Um, you know, just hang out and, and get that cycle timing right. You want to be early. On time is late, and late is late. Early is on time. But just for Mario, not for work. Don't let your work exploit you and make you do work without paying you. A friendly message from your friend, Glitch Cat. Just vibe into this nice music. Yeah, I agree with that, Endless. It may be a little bit tough, but self-determination is ultimately better in situations like this. Erring, erring on the side of giving the player more control is better, even if it creates a situation where sometimes players don't quite know how to use it, which it's a tough line to walk, and it can feel rough sometimes as a player, but... I think that's also just a, you know, can be smoothed over a bit with experience, too. Not to say you don't have that. I, I you know, not, not, not to say that, but it can be a tough line to walk between giving them agency and giving them so much agency that they no longer have the tools to find the solution in the first place. You know, it's the difference between, like, burying a treasure in a field and giving someone a map versus burying a treasure in the field and just telling them it's in that field somewhere. You know, on the one hand, you've... Without telling them, you've let them... You've given them all the agency. They can dig and do whatever they want. <clears throat> but they lack structure. It's that, it's that duality between giving your player agency and providing them with structure 
which they will use to solve the puzzle that is your level. Option paralysis can definitely come into play. And I think that's what some people have experienced with this fight tonight is just sort of, there's just too many things to do. Hey, yo, attention deficit dad, H, H. Nicely done. That was well earned. Do some push-ups, Mario. Yeah, Tunic has really been getting into my brain. Really, really been getting into my brain. It's got me sweating a little bit because, you know, streamers going off your main. I love you, Kaizo community. I, I hope you will welcome me back after I return from the magic fox world of Tunic. But I think Tunic, in my humble opinion, is, is one of the best games in the past 10 years and easily my favorite game. I think of all time as a kid my favorite game it varies uh, maybe not of all time I mean it's a, like how do you rank millipede and tunic you know I like arcade games and things but I think I think tunic is like top three for me honestly I think tunic has finally edged out Mario RPG I really like Mario RPG I always will but I've spent so much time in that world tunic is fresh and, and new and interesting I really do I think it's slightly, it's moved up so fast on the list that it's been kind of amazing. It is such, I think, a valuable experience for me to go back to being a kid and not knowing how to read and not even have, not even knowing how to read the manual and just being lost in a world where I have to figure it out. And there are plenty of games like that. Nothing calls out to me the way Tunic does. And it's, it's been a very honestly it's been a very like moving experience like i'm not like crying you know it's not like it's not that kind maybe i will at the end i don't know but it's been a very profound and, and moving experience I'm not done with it yet, so GG for everybody that already beat it. I had to learn. I'm not quite good at games like that, so I had to get good. I had to I had to spend a lot of time learning and taking the wrong path. And I and I still will. I'm going for full 100% too, so So, wait, wait, don't tell me. One thing to keep in mind uh, for this this section here, uh, the the fire piranhas do kind of aim for Mario. Uh, they sort of stick their head out and then they pick where you are and then they fire. And in knowing that, you can kind of manipulate that a little bit. It can be helpful sometimes in situations like this. And that's an old school Mario trick. I mean, this goes back to the vanilla game, but you know, jumping to where you want the enemy to shoot. And uh, then you're already gone by the time it gets there. The jumping ones that spit the fire out, they just spit it out. But like Fernap dealing with that red one that comes up, that one is actually sort of aiming for Mario. However, they don't aim very well, and they only have a couple of angles that they'll shoot a fireball. And knowing those angles is a really good thing to have in your head. Just, just intuitively knowing the potential angles that a fire piranha has to shoot at you, um, that you know that goes right back old school, 1990s Mario, but um, they don't aim very well, and so they're easy to fake out. 
So that's a little bit of tech to keep in mind for piranhas and things like that. Really anything that aims, right? Anything that's shooting at you. If you can figure out when it takes aim, you can use that moment to kind of juke their position. This has been a really nice race tonight. We were thinking maybe it would be a little shorter, but uh, thankfully we have some folks hanging out and still rock and rolling. What have y'all been listening to for music? I've been kind of slacking on discovering new artists lately. Been doing other things. Fernap getting deeper runs here. Well, thanks for dropping by. If you want to learn a little bit more uh, and you didn't hear me the first time, you can check out romhackraces.com. It's got all the level patches, it's got all the leaderboards, it's got an invite to the Discord if you want to hang out and talk shop with us. I hear you on that, D4. I often am lurking on Twitch streams as well, and uh, I think for me, maybe as a streamer, for me more, I've had to kind of be like, alright, let's do something else, you know, just to having my head in the bucket that is Twitch all day. You know, it can it, it can it can get a little strange sometimes. Sometimes what I do, because honestly, I lurk on streams sometimes for the stream and sometimes just for the gameplay. Like I really just enjoy watching, uh, you know, the gameplay. Um, and I'll just mute the stream and listen to music. I, I sometimes do. I'm like I'm like listening to music and I'm watching a stream and I'm like making a sculpture or something like all at the same time. I just like that's like how I live. It's not even like a distraction thing, although I know it is for some. Uh, for me, it's kind of just like I don't know. I just like being like in the command center, right? In, right in the right in the little central brain, and like all the things, all the screens and things are like going on, and I can like push all the dials and turn all the knobs and run the show from the central headquarter brain. Vampire Survivors. I still have to try that one. I got gifted a copy of that. I should give it a shot. Seems kind of fun. Me? I've been getting into sculpting. I discovered that I'm good at it. I'm not trying to brag. I just discovered I have a sort of aptitude. I've never been very good at drawing. My drawings are always just kind of silly and cute and bad. And that's all well and good. But I've always wished I had a, a visual medium. You know, music is nice, but I wish I could, like, make visual things. And I discovered that I'm okay at sculpting. So I've been learning techniques and making a bunch of stuff. It's actually really, like, it's been really cool. It really surprised me. I, like, I'm just kind of fun. It's like Bob Ross. Like, I start to notice all these illusions that happen, like, automatically. And it's like, whoa. Things just jump out at you. It's really fun. I posted a couple of them on Discord uh, and on my Twitter. I made a cool stone head today with moss growing off it.
Thanks. Thanks. Maybe it would. I, uh... That's just it, though. I... I am abandoning... Not to get down on it. I'm just not good at it. But I, I am leaving the realm of 2D art. I don't... I, 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 I've, I can draw a little bit. I can paint a little bit. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But nothing works the way this works. And things are just like... They look right. Like, how does this look right? Well, because like it looks like a rock. That's how you know it's right. You know, it's easy to make the illusions... And uh, it's difficult to do that in the two-dimensional space. Maybe Skytree could help out, but I I only make models now. I have I have grown beyond your two dimensions. It's just like liquid rock. It's, just, it's like real squishy rocks, and then you squish them up, and then it turns into a big rock. Yeah, too. Dig that endless. Good call on that. Good call. Yeah, by sometimes if you have that low that low overhead, if you pause, you can like find where to put that regrab input. That that is. That's good strats. Use those pauses. Here I put it in chat. I'll show you my show you what I made today. Hey, D4 streams. Well, that would that would be heartwarming. I know. I know. I know some viewers. Got a got a couple right here wherever Mallow is and me. Did you know, I have a hunch that Mallow has certain preferences in streamers. Sometimes, because I, I also, in addition to leaving, just watching Twitch, I will often leave a stream on that I'm watching just for lurk support. Like if I'm going to the grocery store or something and I'm watching a stream, I'll just leave it on. I'm not there, but, you know, I'm just lurk support. Just hang out, you know, lurk. It helps your favorite streamers increase numbers. Those oh-so-important viewership numbers. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think Mallow the Cat has certain tastes in streamers. I always seem to notice that he, uh, uh, in particular, appreciates watching Sojo. I have often found him, I'll, come, I'll lurk on her stream, and we'll go out, and I'll come back, and he'll be sleeping in my chair with her stream on. I think, I think Mallow, I think Mallow likes, uh, likes Sojo's stream in particular. Well, we're getting to be about the two-hour mark tonight. We'd like to hang out and try to get all the clears we can. It's ROM hack races, but we're here to support everybody who's trying their best. If you want to learn a little bit more, again, romhackraces.com is the website. But I just appreciate being able to spend a little bit of time with everybody tonight. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for playing Kaizo and making good levels. Big shout-outs again to Kagem and uh, everybody for making this level. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. I'm getting kind of hungry. I'm thinking about late night snacks here. It's like 10 p.m. out here on the East Coast. I wonder what's open right now. We don't really have a lot of groceries. It's Friday night. I'm wondering, what should I get, chat? What, what should I get, like late night? I'm thinking like late night snack. Snack attack. Like, is it too late to order a pizza? Probably. I don't know how late pizza places are open around here. They always seem to close earlier. Because uh, nobody wants to pay their people to work there. I got some ravioli in the freezer I could heat up, I guess. Common late night snack, ravioli. At least one pizza place is open. Yeah, maybe, but around here, there's like good pizza places and then there's bad pizza places. 
Domino's has been dropping the ball lately. Dropping the ball. And that's fine. You know, maybe people just don't feel like working for pennies at Domino's. I don't blame them. I really don't. But it just means that I'm not going to support their franchise. Could be late night taco night. Yeah, I hear that. Could be. What's up, Trickster? But as we get on closer to the two-hour mark here, I'm starting to think. Start to think about snacks. Got snacks on the brain. Also, I don't know if it's just it's just me, like, but I'm starting to get this weird kind of Tetris effect, where the more I work with clay and I make things out of clay, the more things start to look like clay. Like, just for a second, the pipes in the level, like, looked like they were, like, had that sheen on them, like, made out of clay. It's like a Tetris effect. Like, soon the whole world's just going to be a, a Primus music video. Spicy Nacho Burrito. That sounds good. Oh, I could make some of the things from Clay Fighter. That's a good one. Yeah, I could make, I could model some of the, uh... Some of the monsters from Clay Fighter. That would be good. I'm going to try that. Who's the best fighter from Clay Fighter? I'll try to do bad Mr. Frosty. White is tough to work with as a, as a color because the more you squish it around, it tends to pick up other colors and small amount of lint and dirt so you can't like the more i overwork a piece of white the more it starts to pick up colors although i am finally wearing gloves now I'm, i was tired of buffing out every fingerprint so i'm just like screw it latex gloves i feel like a food service worker because i changed my gloves like five times oh fernap that was it such a good jump there they almost had it Yeah, we could we could be close for an H for Fernap. They are right there. It was freaking snowing today. Maybe it's a uh, it's a good night for like some hot chocolate or something. Wherever you are, wherever you're at, I hope you're feeling comfy and getting a chance to have a nice time, smile about something, have some fun, just relax for a little bit tonight. Thanks for letting us be a part of your Saturdays. It's an honor to perform for you, and I just really hope you're doing well. Get a chance to speak to a lot of people doing this whole stream thing, and I hope I can say something good. Should make a clay version of the device I have for music and sound. <laughs> that would be easy. It's just a grid of buttons. I want to do. I'm doing like some abstract, the reality abstractor. Uh, I want to do more abstract kind of sculptures and stuff. I've always been a great admirer of the work of. Um, and, like, maybe, like, two people in chat are going to know this. Um, I can't even think of his name. Bruce Brickford. Uh, the weird claymation artist. He did a lot of work with uh, Zappa. And um, it's a strange person. Um, there's a documentary about him. But it's not really that interesting. I don't. I was, like, all excited to watch the Bruce Brickford documentary. And then I watched it. And I was like, that's not that interesting. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. Maybe I should have watched it again, but 
I've always been a great admirer of the work of Bruce Brickford, and uh, I want to make, like, weird monster things. It's kind of telling for me that, like, the stuff that I make is, like, the stuff that I draw is all kind of silly and nice, and the stuff that I model is, like, eldritch and scary, and I think that gets into something in my head that is valuable. But enough about me. How you doing? I hope you're having a nice time. Thanks for making Rom Hack Race as a part of your Saturday. What else can I say? Uh, I don't know, you're just nice. You're nice and kind, and it's a pleasure to do these. We will be back yet again Saturday night next week for another race. We got Con Conangaro. Conangaro, I think. Uh, I think that translates as crab maker. Uh, someone mentioned that one time. It was really nice. They're very nice. Can Grejo. Uh, okay, they will be. Yeah, that is the correct pronunciation. Thank you, Doc. Uh, they will be making our level next week. That starts at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard, Super Standard, Super Mario Standard World Time right here on Rom Hack Races. Smash the follow button. Come back and see us again on Saturday. Check out the website if you'd like to play this level or any of the other ones. Jump on the Discord if you want to hang out, talk shop with us. And thank you once again to the volunteer staff that we have working. Really, really appreciate it. Big, big shout-outs to our testers this week, whose names I'm going to tell you. SQL Infection, Darkenine, and Osu Mario Cartman. We really, really appreciate giving a little bit of time in the week to test the levels for us. Big shout-outs, of course, to Kagem, Makers Tonight, Dr. No, and D to the 4th running the restream and the website respectively. Om nom 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 nom. Kelgand and Chair Evie for helping us mod the chat and keeping everybody in line. Thank you all so much for being a part of this. We're going to go raid Attention Deficit Dad to wrap up the evening on a smile. We'll see you again next week. And for my community, my friends, I will see you all again uh, probably Sunday night. I'm hungry, and by the time I get some food and sit down to stream, it's going to be like in the morning. Thanks for getting a smile from Furret on our stream. And don't forget, you matter. And your thoughts matter, your heart matters, your feelings matter. You matter to other people in your lives, and you matter to me as human beings. You matter to the internet, someone long boy for it. And the people who matter to you in your lives would love to hear from you about that. We know black lives matter, LGBTQIA plus lives matter, indigenous lives matter, disabled lives matter, matter, bleh, you too. And I will see you all again next time. Keep hacking. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Oh. Peace out.